salsa, baby. Boom, 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 beat. All right, Juanitosville, we're back. Uh, after working on this quite a bit, and dude, it, it was a challenge. But if you guys see that, I think it's going to be worth it. I mean, there's, it was a really, I have, it was a challenge. But uh, Juanitosville, we are here. This is what we're working with. If you guys seen the previous video, this is, uh, you guys saw what a headache that was, but I made it happen because I didn't quit. Uh, resilience and perseverance, friends. Uh, but right here, and you guys probably may have saw, seen, saw, saw, I saw that, the hinge video. This one, we're going to do the slide clasp, the slide clasp, which um, I kind of thought maybe I might have invented it. I don't know. I call it the boom clasp because if I did invent it, it should be named after me, right? So anyways, we're going to do the uh, the slide clasp, which is a sliding clasp that goes right there. And uh, that we're going to start with 26 gauge. Normally I do this with 24 gauge, but because this is uh, such a small slide clasp, it's going to, I'm really need, gonna, going to need to bend it. You know, 20 gauge would be way too thick to try to to try to work with with my skill level. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and cut this out, and then we're gonna. I think I've already kind of mocked it up about how wide I want it. I go like this, then I imagine it bending over and then in, like this. You feel what I'm saying? Well, hell, guys, let's just believe in that. I think we can suffice with that much. I don't know how I'll, I'll, I'll square it up, but basically it's going to go like this. Cut that out, and then we'll move on to the next step of the slide clasp. For the first time, I'm showing this, so that's pretty cool. I didn't shear that out, guys. I just figured it'd be easier to saw it out. 26 gauge, man. That number three saw blade goes through it so fast. Got that going. Um, let's see. My microphone's still on. Hell no. All right, so right here, guys, I'll get the width of the slide. And what I'll do is I'll, uh, I know that the class needs to be at least just inside of the edge. Just inside of the edge. I don't like math. I'll use it to in order to make my life easier, but I just believe in what I what I can see you know what I mean because it's pretty straightforward I got those two lines the reason why I went just inside of the width of the band was because I know that whenever I bend it over it's gonna not it's not gonna bend right at the line it's gonna bend a little bit outside of the line because that's just the nature of the way metal bends what I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try to score some saw lines on those lines so that whenever I bend it in it, it the material wants to bend a little easier I've seen some pros do that but not if my saw is going hitting right there some pros out there are like dude you, you your bench pin is super whack like, I know, I know. I'm one of those types of guys I like I like to struggle <sighs> really friends but these are jewelry adventures friends so sometimes we have to adventure beyond what is comfortable for us or what we've done before. I mean, if I waited for someone to teach me everything that I know, I, I would not be very um, evolved as a silver worker. Because you really have to sometimes just in the shop by yourself when no one's watching, just try stuff. No judgment. Just on sure, sure belief in yourself and curiosity. Um, jewelry is a lot about exploring your own curiosity with metal and with shine and with technique and all that good stuff. So I think I'm gonna put this in my vise. I'm gonna give it a nice bend. I'm gonna put the other end of my vise, give it a nice bend and I'll bring you right back. Here we are, 
this is the way that it looks. I just bent it in my vise. I try to bend it along those lines. I don't know if it is a benefit yet, but you get these kind of 90 degrees. Now I haven't figured out how to eliminate this bow. I get that, but usually what I do right here is I'll just, while it's 90, 90 before you bend it anymore, while it's still 90 degrees, give it a, a little tap with the edge of your mallet. And then you have a flatter, flatter. And you might have to keep doing that, friends, as you're bending this. It's gonna wanna bow again. But you just keep, keep an eye on it and just keep looking at it. Focus right next to the seam, get that to be kind of a sharper, as sharp as possible. So this is the point we're at now. It is a little work hardened, friends, so I might want to anneal that. And then eventually there's gonna be a slide that's gonna be in the middle here. And I'm, if you guys get my drift, but you don't wanna bend it so far. You don't wanna just go gung ho, because if it goes all the way in and it touches under there, you're, you're gonna have a really hard time prying that back up, bending this over so it's just elevated above enough so that it, the slide can slide in. But um, <laughs> jewelry has taught me patience if nothing in life has. Okay, now one thing I wanna tell you guys, now that we're here, because I almost spaced it out, is um, round these inside edges while you can, because once they're in there and bent over, it's gonna be really hard to access them. Ring mandrel, little wedge, and you can see I've used it quite a bit. I actually use it a lot for other, what, for its other purpose besides being a ring, ring mandrel wedge. Okay, so I wanted to share this with you guys. I, uh, I, softened, I softened these uh, edges here, but I also went underneath here and, and softened under there and softened under there. So while it's flat, probably soften the whole thing and then round the edges while it's still flat. You know, we're always, I'm always getting better. And when I watch this video, next time I make this, I could watch this video and just refresh because I think I knew that, but I forgot. Huh? Light taps, friends, light taps. Now I just need to make a, a slide for it. And this is 20 gauge. So it's gonna be a nice uh, heavy slide. Although on mine, I think it's 24 gauge. And like I said, I've had it for I've had it for several years. Yeah, that's 24 gauge, definitely. Hinge on the outside knuckle is the way that I designed it. To have to follow this curve. And as you can imagine, when you bend that over to follow the curb, it's going to pinch these, pinch these uh, arms down. Now that this this is a great clasp right now. If it if it was on a flat surface, but because we're working on a curve, we have a, a little bit of a challenge of the curb surface. So we are going to get this to bend. We're going to anneal it. Or we'll find something else to put in there. I've also done. I just remembered this. I've done copper, copper wire in there. I have a 16 gauge wire that I just cut a couple pieces. Put these right in here. Let's see if this works. Instincts say to kind of bend these over like this. Smarter idea. Let's do it to the other side. Hook. I've never done it like this before, guys, so. Hopefully this helps. Okay, now we're gonna bend that. I got the tiger is the king of. I don't want to. I don't want to uh, take away this experience from you guys. Cause you know how I get. I get a little carried away sometimes. When I... So just so you know, what I did is I, I didn't hammer. I just went like, Ugh! just use thumb thumb juice. Wham! I just look at the angle here and determine how close I am. And it looks, like, it looks like I'm pretty close, friends, to a nice angle that's gonna go with that. So we're gonna finagle that and just work it until we get it uh, something that we're really happy with. 
And then what I do is I uh, cut this in half, blam, and then solder half of this, this onto this side and the other half onto this side. Whew, very simple, but just steps, just steps. I wanna show you guys this. I'm gonna pull these wires out. And uh, I think this is the way I'm gonna start doing them from now on, guys. Cause that really, I was really pleased with the result of this. Really, you guys are looking at my silly socks. Let's go right here so you guys can. I always try to put the camera right there so you guys can't see my socks. So all I need is some trolls out there, but you know, nice socks. What are you, some kind of? I am a sock lover, actually. I'm a lover of socks. Don't you care about climate change? I said, I care about socks. I think we're really close. I am going to uh, draw a line. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just saw this. Cool. So these two parts where they meet, I don't round it like I do right here, but I do soften it just a little bit. But this is, uh, that's where it's gonna be. All right, so now we're gonna measure the slide. The part that goes inside of this I want this to be just just about the same size that way if I and then I'm, I can file it to uh, to a perfect fit don't file like I file with my fingers see how I almost filed my fingernail off like an idiot all right we're going 24 gauge I decided to go 24 gauge I was thinking about 22 gauge um, I had this nice piece of 22 gauge, but this is five and a half inches, man. That's a bracelet right there. You gotta think about how you're gonna use your silver, I guess, huh? So I'm gonna go a little bit longer to account for the curve. And um, I've already divided it to know about how wide I want. All right, we're gonna give it the old uh, preliminary mock-up. Got that right there. This is the back side. Boom. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna clean it, put solder on the backs of these and get these prepared to place. I wanted to show you guys this, uh, just to let you know, I put these wires back in here and I'm really looking at it. And you wanna put in a little extra effort, friends, to just ensure that you have a nice, I use my half round pliers here and I just um, bent and just kind of bent it, bent it, bent it, kept looking at it, bent it, looked at it. And uh, I finally have it in a place for my angle that it looks really, really good. So just know that you might have to put these wires back in there and give it some more. Just another thing I wanted to say, friends. Okay, take two. Another thing I wanted to say is I have, it's, it's, it's this piece right here. So whenever the slide goes, it knows where to stop. And it's also part of the design. Boom. And we're preparing this surface for boom just like that if you really want to do this early work get it just like you want it so you don't have any surprises down the road this uh stop that we created i'm hoping i can do this all at once i'm gonna go pretty serious with the heat not serious but i'm gonna go a little heavy with the heat um kind of a medium high heat i guess you might call it all right friends we're gonna Push that right there and hope for the best. I think I can go. No, oh, buddy. Okay. I think it's funny when people say, "Oh, oh, Johnny, he he's he's he, he, he really turned his life around. He he he, he he's a complete 360 from where he was." You're like, okay, he'd be right where he was. <laughs> oh, jeez. Here we go. We're gonna try this again. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Medium high heat again, guys. I might edit that joke out. And then one of those videos, like, if I edit it out, they'll be like, what joke was he talking about? Oh, man. I feel like I missed out. Maybe I'll leave it in there. I don't know. What I like about these bracelets is that this soldering stuff that we have to do is so far away from the hinges. Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Okay, let's not, we won't focus on that right now. It's sealed towards the back, the back end. Oh, wait, what am I doing? I still got more work to do, friends. It's moving on. Oh, this bus doesn't slow down for no one. Okay, I 
don't know if I don't see any solder running yet, but it looks like it wants to. I think I'm going to believe in that. Even though I didn't see it, I kind of just know the metal and I think it's where it wants to be, where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm going to let these cool off and I'm going to bend them down just one more time, give them a little, and then we're going to heat them up again. Maybe not this one, but definitely this one because I'm going to have to put this back on there, but I'm going to angle it more so that it doesn't slide off. Right where it's at the threshold, I'll bring it back right at that. See, the brace, it won't break open. But once I bring it right to the threshold, it will pop open. At that threshold, I want to get a line with my marker where that line is. I'm going to put another piece of tube right there because that's going to be this part. And actually, the tube acts as two pieces. It actually stop. It's a stop, so the piece doesn't the the slide doesn't fall out. It holds the uh, this wire. Then I'll do some design on this. Oh, geez. Oh, wait, is it? Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. Design with the slide, guys. Remember to put this push. This uh, this is going to help you open and close it. This is where you're going to put your thumb on. So you want to put it towards the back end, the back end of the piece. I'm putting mine right there. So now we're gonna do this uh, this thumb latch that helps your thumb kind of pull and push the slide. And what I do is I put a piece of little square and then I put a ball on top of the square. It allows a little bit of elevation and something for that wire to click right onto. All right, friends, you guys are real soldiers, man. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. Um, we're getting close. We're getting close to the finish here, the finish line here, friends. So I have this piece of tube that we discussed earlier. You wanna really angle your, your heat away from these hinges, friends. Cause that that will make your life mad right here i got the the pin and i melted a ball at the end and i was just mocking it up to make sure that it it doesn't take much for it not to go all the way through now i will probably file that down so that it's more of a flat i make it flat so it'll look like a a flat top it'll look like an afro flat top here i'm going to cut it at about two millimeters and then i'm going to do my cross hatch hammer and i'll show you how i do that i know there's a better way out there so i'm always open to uh links or ideas or just a comment to help me a better uh, figure out a better way to do this all right Juanitosville, i uh this is where we're at i got this tool with one of my i can't remember if i ordered it or if i got it with one of my sets Riveting to do rivets. I use this all the time for rivets, but it's also good for this too, is to put it. And I, I, I wish there was a better way. I, th I think there is. I just don't know it. But I'm going to cut this about two millimeters above with the flush cutters. Boom. Usually I do this after the whole thing is polished, but because you guys are with me, I'm going to. I'm going to do it like this, and I'll polish it all. So I give that a file. It's about a millimeter and a half, friends. About a millimeter and a half. And then I get this little hammer. Are you guys with me? This little hammer. You, I just really look closely, and I just, right here on the head... Something like that, and then I rotate it a little bit, and then I give it some more. Dang, that's going down there, friends. I should have made this, I should have, instead of uh, a millimeter and a half, I should have won a solid two millimeters. Because I, I can cut this out and redo it, but let's see if I can make this work, just for shits and giggles since we're here.
Actually, that might be the best job I've ever done. It's actually almost flush, but it's so big it's not going to go through. Dude, that's a good job. <sighs> that's not bad. That's not going. That's not going. Uh, I'll pay attention to it, but as I work with it, but that's actually. So the next part is to put some 18 gauge wire right in here. As I discovered a design flaw in my effort to do this one right here. Normally I go with a wire pretty wide. The wide, not wire, I'm sorry, I'm going with a wide tube. That tube is narrow and it works, but I don't like it. It's not very stable and I want to have a wider, more stable tube. So I'm going to switch that out for a wide tube and that's what's happening. Okay, party animals, this is where we're at. It still needs a little bit of fine tuning, but man, boys and goyles, look at that. <sighs> Blam. I put a little edge, a little notch, so that when it goes in, then it kind of hugs around the end piece right here. If you guys can see that. Oh, buddy, yeah. So that's it, friends. I'm going to go through uh, some cleanup work, fine-tuning, getting everything, kind of like bending it just where I, like I want it. But this is essentially it. Thank you so much for hanging out. I know it was a long process. It was more painful than I uh, appreciate, actually. But I learned a lot, and I hope you guys learned too. And... No matter how many times you do this and do these bracelets, you're always going to keep learning. You're going to keep just getting better. So it was great for me to do another one. I haven't done one in a while. And uh, we're back, friends. We're back. We made it happen. Boom class, slide class, whatever you want to call it. Uh, very comfortable all the way around the wrist. And just people just think this is cool when they see this. I don't know how much somebody would pay for something like this. But uh, that's really up to you and your market and your area and what you're trying to get. So do your thing. Keep adventuring out there, friends. Keep making your dreams come true. Keep getting better. Keep practicing. Keep pushing and challenging yourself. And yeah, so as always, if this value, this video had any value to you, please subscribe. Um... I like hearing from you guys and I like having subscribers, man, because then I don't feel like I'm just like in a room doing jewelry by myself. I feel like I'm doing it with you guys and in some ways for you guys so you guys can learn through some of my mistakes. So thanks again. I'm Bam Boom. I'm out. Peace.